Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my Last of Us season two video. They've already explained what's happening with the season. They're changing it dramatically from the plot of the Last of Us two game. So I'll explain why they're changing it, how they're changing it. Of course, I'll be doing videos for season two episodes, just like I did for season one. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. And careful for spoilers for the season one episodes if you haven't seen the finale yet. The only thing we can be sure of is that we understand why he did it. And we understand that Ellie would not have wanted him to do it. So the big news is that Neil Druckmann and the showrunner, HBO just in general, said that they do plan on doing a completely different storyline than The Last of Us 2 game, or at least at the beginning. Originally, they'd also said that they were going to split the story of the second game into multiple future seasons. So in the way that they change some of the storyline for the first game for season one, they'll do that even more during season two. Part of the reason why they're splitting the story into multiple seasons and they didn't do that during season one is because the story of the first game is so much shorter than the story of the second game. People who hated the second game will be really happy to know that they are changing the plot dramatically for a couple different reasons. One of the big things about the second game is also that it was very divisive with the fan base. So people either loved it or they absolutely hated it. So if you've seen a lot of talk online like, oh, people love season one, but they're going to hate season two because they've been expecting season two to directly adapt the exact same plot as the second video game. That's why, because there was so much blowback in the fandom for the second game. And largely it's because the game takes a dramatic left turn and really only follows the Ellie character. So it just feels like a completely different vibe, like a totally different type of game, different story than what people were expecting after the events of the first game. Like, wait a minute, this is a story about Joel and Ellie having adventures. And it's very likely that HBO just does not want to completely turn the show on Bella Ramsey. She did a great job as Ellie during season one, but I don't think that she could hold up an entire show for like another three to four seasons by herself. Pedro Pascal is on fire right now. If you haven't been watching my Mandalorian season three episode videos, he is fantastic in pretty much everything that he does. We are full Pedro Pascal into the Pascal verse right now with him just blowing it up all over the place. The funny thing about that too is that the plot of the Mandalorian is very similar to the plot of The Last of Us with him protecting Grogu on the Mandalorian and protecting Ellie. He's like a protective dad on both series protecting children. So when they say they're dramatically changing the plot of the second game for season two, what they might be doing is using a lot of the flashbacks in the missing period during a time jump between season one and season two that the game just skips completely over. The events of the second game pick up after a five year time jump after the end of season one and the end of season one ends pretty much where you saw the end of the finale with them looking at over Tommy's settlement, the promise, the lie that Joel tells to Ellie again. If they still plan on adapting most of the characters from the second game, they can use that five year time jump to tell more story, more development of Ellie and develop Abby's character who winds up being the main antagonist of the second game. There was actually a brief reference to Abby in the finale, but not the kind of Easter egg that you would expect to see. Like she as a character did not appear in the finale, but Lauren Bailey, the voice actor who played Abby in the games did cameo as one of the nurses in the finale. And in the games, Abby is meant to be the daughter of the Firefly's lead surgeon that Joel killed, setting up this revenge arc for her character where she becomes the main antagonist in the second game. But this character that Lauren Bailey was playing was just meant to be a regular nurse. It was just a bit of an Easter egg behind the scenes that she herself was the voice actor who played Abby. I don't expect her to play Abby on the TV show in season two. Speaking of video game actors cameoing and big connections in other productions, some of you might remember Laura Bailey from Critical Role, which she also does with Ashley Johnson, who cameoed as Ellie's mother in the episode. And what they can do during season two is tell more of the story during that missing five year time jump, develop Abby's character and just delay the meeting between Abby, Joel and Ellie till much later in the games. And without getting into big spoilers, they can always save the big twist with Joel and Abby's character till the very end of the series, like season four, season five, if they wanted to, however many seasons they want to go. So that's probably what they mean when they say they're going to radically change the plot of the second game for season two, season three and beyond. For those that complained about this, they also confirmed that season two will have way more infected in different kinds of infected, which is meant to be a reference to the other stages of the infection and types of infected you run into in the games. Stage one are meant to be the runners, stage two are the stalkers after a little bit of time has gone by. After more time goes by, they develop into clickers. And then the most powerful stage that we saw was stage four, the bloaters, which we saw back in episode five. When they were teasing the other types of infected, they were talking mostly about shamblers, which are stage four, which become more powerful and harder to kill and potentially stage five, which is basically like the rat king. 
The racking is meant to be this amalgam of a bunch of different types of infected that kind of morph together and turn into a giant hybrid infected. Sort of like a transformer infected. He's more like a boss level character, so they'd probably save him for much later in the series. They said the main reason why there weren't as many infected during season one that people were expecting is mostly because they said when they were writing the season, Joel and Ellie's fight against the infected in the game in those different parts felt ancillary or too extra for what was happening with the plot. Like they had a hard time justifying a lot of those fights during the episodes. Like why would they go off and fight this other group of infected for like another 15 minutes of the episode when it's not necessary? So I think they heard a lot of fans complaints like, wait a minute, there's supposed to be infected fungus all over the place. Why aren't we seeing more of that? HBO said, note taken, way more infected coming to season two. But during the five year time jump, it's meant to be a period of relative quiet safety in which Joel nurtures and raises Ellie. He pays off his reference earlier in the finale by teaching her how to play guitar. A lot of the songs that they play are cover songs featured in both games, which they also use during the Last of Us season one episodes. During this time, Ellie keeps her immunity secret from everyone else in Tommy's community. Tommy knows, but everybody else doesn't know about it yet. She even winds up masking her bite mark with a tattoo. But it's meant to be a good life over those next five years after the end of season one. She makes good friends like Dina and Jesse. They had an Easter egg quick cameo scene for Dina earlier when they first visited Tommy's settlement. Fans spotted this and Neil Druckmann kind of confirmed it. He implied this girl peeking at Ellie, who she yells at because her social skills are non-existent at this point, is supposed to be Dina from later in the games. Both Joel and Ellie spend a lot of time just working the regular odd jobs, helping protect the community from random infected that show up in the area. There are infected in fungus in the area, just not quite as many as you would expect in a large city. Joel continues to nurture his hobbies like woodworking, wildlife, guitar playing, trying to nurture Ellie's interests like outer space, dinosaurs. But slowly, more and more of a wedge grows between the two of them over Ellie's perceived loss of her destiny, her grand purpose for existing in the season one finale. She knows deep down that he's not telling the truth, but she can't let herself believe it. Too scary, the idea that her only purpose in life hasn't been fulfilled. And then Joel puts all of that on the line. Like a parent, you feel like you need to lie to your children to protect them. And that's what Joel does at the very end. That that had been taken away from her by the person that she loves and trusts the most. It's too overwhelming. So she forces herself to believe Joel. She'd assumed that whole time during season one, she'd helped the Fireflies save the entire human race. And even during their initial escape, she had started to suspect everything that Joel told her about what happened wasn't totally true. And slowly over time, that feeling begins to fester in her as she grows complacent and directionless with no sense of real purpose anymore. Like, what is she supposed to be doing? What is life going to be now that she doesn't have a grand purpose anymore? She starts to probe him for more details and answers until finally he admits everything he told her was a lie and why he did it. You find out the year before the second game picks up, about year four into the time jump, she went back to the Salt Lake City Hospital, St. Mary's Hospital herself, to get her own answers about what happened and discovers the truth. Joel winds up telling her the whole truth and it destroys their relationship. Ellie doesn't want to have anything to do with them anymore, but Joel continues to watch over her, still caring about her like a daughter, and he still believes what he did was best for her. All the single dads out there are like, I believe in Joel, he did the right thing. It's after this that you meet the Abby Anderson character in the Washington Liberation Front, her group, or the WLF. They had traveled 800 miles from Seattle to find Joel so that Abby could get revenge for him killing her father, the Firefly's lead surgeon that he killed in the finale. During a random winter storm at Tommy's settlement, a herd of infected attack in the chaos, Joel and Tommy wind up helping Abby without realizing who she is, putting the man that she was trying to find right where she wanted him, with Ellie finding them too late and having to witness what goes down, and it winds up being this big revenge arc for Ellie against Abby and her group. So it's after this point that the WLF, the Washington Liberation Front, and the Abby character become the main villains of the second game. And it's basically here where the plot of the second game just completely takes a left turn direction where fans just were completely flabbergasted. Like, wait a minute, we were not expecting the game to take this direction. What's going on? And it's basically right at the beginning of the second game, like very little time goes by, then boom. So this is why I'm saying that HBO wants to change the plot dramatically of the second game. Like we don't want one episode and then the show to completely just follow Bella Ramsey by herself. Thematically though, the whole second game is meant to be about the trauma of what Ellie is forced to witness and how it consumes her for the rest of the events of the games, probably the third game too if they make The Last of Us 3, putting her and Abby on parallel arcs. 
It takes Ellie to a very dark place in the way that Joel was a very dark person at the beginning of the first season. And they try to use the story of the second game to show you how revenge often winds up destroying the very people who are seeking it. Like if you're seeking revenge, dig two graves, one for the other person and one for yourself. But the leaders of this other group, the WLF, that will probably wind up becoming one of the main antagonists of future seasons are Isaac Dixon, Marcus Wilson, Louis Sanchez, Jason and Emma Patterson. And Isaac's story is actually very similar to Kathleen in The Hunters in that he winds up being kind of a tyrant that the WLF holds up as a really awesome person that was able to get rid of Fedra because the WLF in the Seattle quarantine zone were successful, kind of like the Hunters were, in getting rid of Fedra. It just implied that the Isaac character was every bit as stabby, every bit as much of a tyrant as Kathleen was. So what they might do with season two and future seasons is just start earlier in that five-year time gap between the first and the second game to show more development, show more of Ellie's relationship with these other characters like Jesse and Dina, so that when they become bigger characters later in the story, fans care about them way more. And so when the Abby character shows up in the story, people care about her way more too. And also, when the plot starts turning more around Ellie versus Abby, if they do go in that direction eventually, fans will just care about it more, it won't feel like a knee-jerk left turn. It'd be kind of like on Game of Thrones, if you follow the Jon Snow character and a lot of these other main characters for the first five seasons, then he dies at the end of season five and he doesn't come back and they follow the little bear character and you're like, wait a minute, why is the story following the little bear now? HBO's like, no, no, we're not going to do that. They want to keep their Pedro Pascal, Joel character on the show as long as possible. The other path they might be taking is they do pick up after the five-year time jump because Bella Ramsey in real life is actually about as old as Ellie is in the second game. It's just that she still looks like a little girl physically. They could follow the plot of the second game very closely like they did during season one in the first game, but they just don't do the big Joel Abby twist and they leave that for the very end of the series. So that during season two, season three, you spend all this time traveling around with Ellie, but Pedro Pascal's Joel is with her. Or they could substitute someone else for that big Joel twist like Tommy's character. And they could always do something completely different with Abby, playing a totally different role in the narrative, and she's not the main villain of season two. They created the Kathleen character out of whole cloth, out of nothing for the show, so she wasn't part of the games. They could do the same thing in season two with the Washington Liberation Front. Or they could delay their group and bring back the Hunters as more revenge villains in season two and replace some of the Abby storyline with more Hunters revenge stuff. Let me know in the comments though if HBO says they're going to radically change the plot of the second game for season 2 and future seasons, what do you think they're going to change about the plot? I'll do more Last of Us season 2 videos when we get more details and we start getting some footage when they start filming. In related HBO news, House of the Dragon season 2 episodes will be releasing next year. I just did a House of the Dragon season 2 teaser video so I'll link that below in the description. And in related Pedro Pascal news, the Mandalorian Season 3 episodes have started. My full Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 3 video will post later this week. You can click here for that. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for my full Last of Us Episode 9 finale video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. And this is the way.